innovation is perhaps the oldest fables of human history. Right from the time we invented how to use a wheel, then to the time you know when we figure out how to use fire properly, innovation is a game that is being ongoing and is still continuing and it will keep going on. Innovation is also a word which we hear quite a lot these days. As you can see, the use of the word has gone quite high and uh, we keep hearing it everywhere. But innovation is also often the most abused, misused and overused word. Not anything and everything is innovation. It's very easy to say that, but it's not the case. But it is important that we are all a part of innovation because it will happen whether you are a part of it or not. So we need to understand a bit about it. So every new idea is not an innovation within itself. If you take the idea that humans should be able to fly, that idea has been there for hundreds of years. Uh, we even know of a few scientists during the period of the Renaissance who tried to attach wings like the birds and they tried to fly. They went to the rooftop and they tried to flap it, but they fell down and broke their legs, unfortunately. And it's only been around 115 years ever since the Wright brothers got it right. Uh, until then, it was just an idea up in the air. So within 50 to 60 years after that, we were able to put humans in outer space. And today, just 115 years after that, we are speaking about shifting the whole human civilization to other planets and whatnot. So that is the power of implementing an idea. We often feel that, uh, okay, every new idea need not be innovation. But if I can implement or use something which is already out there, maybe that is innovation, in a way. But if we were to talk about an anatomy of innovation, this is what it would be. It is when you take an idea, implement it, and inventions happen around that in order to facilitate that idea to happen. And if it is accepted by the masses and used, and if it is going to change the way we live our lives, if it is going to redefine our lives, that is innovation. It's a huge thing. We all know about the innovation of our lifetimes, smartphones. Uh, say 40 years ago, had I said that we would be able to share any digital data from any part of the world to any other part of the world. It would have been like stuff of magic, right? It would, people would have been like, you crazy, how can we do that? But we do that so seamlessly and so easily nowadays, and we even take it for granted, right? Um, if we are not getting enough speed on our phone, we are like, oh my God, what's happening? And uh, you know, everything, all our work, everything is being driven by how much it could be used on a phone. That is how much smartphones has shaped our lives. So smartphone is a big innovation of our lifetimes. But in order to enable smartphones, there are more than 250,000 inventions which are enabling the whole smartphone industry today. So we need to understand about that. And you know, it's very easy to be fascinated by a really big idea, but we need to understand what is the part that we could play how can we be a part of innovation, which is an ongoing fable? And what is the role I could play? We need to understand what are the types of players in innovation. So we have the inspirations, ideators, inventors, and influencers. Inspirations are people who come across maybe once in a generation, someone like Isaac Asimov or Arthur C. Clarke. They have inspired a whole generation into inventing stuff and all of, almost all of Isaac Asimov's fictional writing are being used by robotics engineers to implement actual stuff. So that is what inspirations can do. But often inspirations are way ahead of their times. Uh, someone living at, at their lifetime would not be able to understand the implications of what these guys are talking about. That is where we need the ideators. Ideators are the one who understand what the inspirations are talking figure out how it could be used in the world as we live today. What are the problems that we have and how to draw inspiration from those inspirations and what is the idea that we could come up with in order to solve practical problems in today's world. And then you have the inventors who are actually working on something hands-on. They create implementations and inventions and they actually give shape to the idea conceived by the ideators. 
And the fourth and perhaps one of the most important group of players is influencers. Influencers could be anyone from an investor who is you know, ready to invest money in some innovative startup company to the end user, consumers, all of us. We all use Bluetooth a lot, right? If you may remember, maybe 10 years ago, there was this another technology called IR technology. It was another way of transferring data from one computer to another computer or phone or whatnot. But somehow, it never picked up. It simply vanished within a span of a very few years. But Bluetooth is still relevant, very relevant, because it gained mass acceptance by people. And we are all influencers in that particular thing. Okay, so innovation is good. We all want to be innovative. Organizations want to be known as innovative organizations. People want to use good products and services and companies want to produce that. Why don't we all just go out and be innovative all the time then? Ever wondered why is it so hard? Why is it so difficult to be innovative? That's because innovative is counterintuitive to whatever we learn in our schools or whatever is expected out of us from the society. That is efficiency. Think about it. The moment you try and be innovative, efficiency would go for a toss. But in order to be successful, you have to be both. It's like saying everybody wants to be the Batman. Being Batman is innovative, it's extremely cool. But in order to be that, the other half of the time, you have to be Bruce Wayne. You, you need to have all that money, you need to have all that you know, resources in order to be able to hire people like Alfred who can help you when you're the Batman. So we often don't look at that side of anything. But Bruce Wayne is the efficiency side of things. Batman is innovative side of things. You have to be both. It's not easy, it's very difficult. The moment you try and be innovative, efficiency would go for a toss. So it needs to be balanced very well. It's a very tricky game, this innovation, right? But it is necessary for us to understand about it because we are all shaping the future today. I mean, whatever future we are here today, was shaped maybe 25, 30 years ago. And all of us here, we are going to be shaping the future and that would be fables about us maybe 100 years down the line. So each one of us would fall into any one of the four categories here and maybe two or three, you know, depending on what stage of life you are in. So we need to understand what is the contribution that we could make, what is the player I am right now. We got the player part, now let's understand the game. Innovation is an infinite game. Infinite games don't have an end. They simply go on. You cannot win an infinite game. Then what are we doing? I mean, if innovation can't be won, what is the point? There is also finite games within the infinite games. Those are the things we have to focus on. Like they say, right, every small step leads you to a big leap in the future. So these are the finite games which can be quantified, which could be won or lost, depending on how you play it. And these are the games we have to focus on. Unfortunately, innovation being such an attractive and a huge concept, finite games often get lost in the game. But it is very bad to underestimate the power of finite things. Just for example, if you were to ask me, what is the one invention which is the reason for all the technological advancement, all the urbanization and the development that we have today in the world? I would attribute it to the invention of the elevator, the lift. The lift was invented somewhere in the mid 1800s. The purpose of it was to help invalid and old people to climb up a stair, one flight of stairs. That's all they had at that time. But once the invention was out there, okay, we can go up by a stair, why don't we build another thing? That led to improvement in the field of architecture, where they figured out, okay, earlier we were only constructing houses with one floor, because, you know, who can climb all the way up? But now, that limitation is not there. We have something called elevator, it will take people up. So we started constructing huge buildings, cities were formed, urbanization happened, because of which a lot of people with same ideas, they came together, 
You take any big city in the world today, skyline of that huge famous city would not exist if elevator was not invented. So, and I'm sure the inventor of elevator wouldn't have thought the impact that he was going to make in the future, but he has made that. All of us here are no different. We are all playing some finite game in our lives, day in and day out. And if we can focus on the outcomes of each of those games, understand the part that we could play, the infinite will take care of itself. They say, right, think big. Good, think big, but act small. Small things have a way of building towards what is really big and what really matters. Focus on the finite, the infinite will take care of itself. In conclusion, I just have this to say. Innovation is an infinity war and it has no end game. Thank you very much.